Hey, it's Tara with Reiki on the Run. And today I want to talk about being an empath and uh, all that it entails. Uh, we'll talk about what it means kind of to be an empath. Um, some reasons I don't like labeling yourself, myself as an empath, and some things that you can do to kind of deal with it if you are an empath. Um, so first we'll talk about the kind of definition of an empath, and of course I have my notes as usual down here. Um, an empath, the ability to feel or experience emotions of those around you. So that's the definition, although I'm not a big fan of the word the ability to. Ability is kind of a skill. Um, and so I think a lot of people don't practice it or try it. It's just something that is something that happens, I know, with myself. Um, I did not realize I was an empath. I didn't know what an empath was. So obviously I am an empath and, um, but I don't, I don't identify as one. Um, I was thrilled to find out that I am and that it's a thing and it explained a lot about how I process things and why I do the things I do and, and, and things that have, I've experienced, but I don't label myself as an empath, I don't adopt that um, identity, and I'll explain more about that later. I think it's good to know, I think, I'm, I'm so glad I know, um, but then I, I think it's good to move on from that. So um, a little bit about what it's like to be an empath or some things you might experience. Um, I think everyone can relate to, um, say you walk into a funeral you walk into the church or you walk into the room where they're having a wake or a funeral and you can feel the heaviness of the room. You know, if there's ever a, a sad event or even a happy event, you could walk into a room and you can feel that energy. And I think everyone has that ability. And an empath is someone who will have those feelings and notice those feelings um, with everyone. They'll get that, that read of a room on, uh, on a person. So it's not just when it's such a big heavy thing that everyone can very clearly see and feel it will be on an individual basis. Um, and so for me, how I've experienced it, and I know there are a lot of different ways you can experience it. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's an energetic emotional feeling and it just completely comes over, over me and I can feel people's problems and I can feel that energy um, sometimes I can pick up on people's insecurities just by the way they walk the way they carry themselves um, but some people will, will have feelings like a, a prickly feeling uh, maybe like you might get the back of your neck or um, maybe with cool cool warm sensations things like that that's not something I've experienced but I've read that others have um, some other ways you can be an empath, you can, you can experience being an empath is that crowds can drain you. And I know a lot of people that can be it, whether you are or not. Um, and before, actually before I even go any further, I just wanna say, um, a lot of people might say, as we bring this up, about how some people could feel drained in a crowd and, and et cetera. Um, some people might say, oh, that's not a real thing. You just experience uh, these, these things and you're just a normal people, normal people experience those. And, I, and, and to that I say, um, I don't agree. And it reminds me of parenting. Um, you know, people will say, oh, you don't need to be a parent to experience certain things or to feel a certain way. And that's not true. Uh, you know, when I had my children, before I had my children, I thought I loved my nieces and nephew more than anything on the planet and that there would be no love greater than that. And um, you couldn't convince me otherwise, but when I became a parent, the love that I experienced was so much greater. So um, you can say, if you want, that, that it's not a real thing. That's fine, I will, I will agree to disagree. Um, kind of reminds me too of growing pains. I don't know if any of you, I'm really tall for a woman and um, if you grew a lot as a kid you had growing pains and they're real and it feels like your body just aches and gets stretched out and no one can tell me that's not real either so let's get that out of the way um, anyway so 
a crowd can feel really draining. Um, you can almost feel the energy of every single person you make eye contact with. And, and you know, some might even not need to make that eye contact. Um, I usually feel it when I have some sort of, when I see the person, I don't know that I, I necessarily feel energy behind me or something. It's always been a connection thing to me and not necessarily that I need to speak with someone, but just even see them. And I could kind of feel that energy. Another um, thing is that you'll feel overwhelmed for no reason that you can think of. You, you can just feel super overwhelmed or depressed even and nothing is going wrong in your life. You don't know why you get this, this feeling of just feeling overwhelmed and like there's a lot going on even if there's really just not a lot going on in your life. Um, another one, a huge one, uh, my mom was like this, she used to call herself crazy magnet. Um, but everyone will tell you their problems. You um, probably, if you are an empath, that happens to you. Strangers just can dump all their problems on you. Uh, you're probably known as a really good listener. And then you tend to absorb that. You tend to absorb that. And uh, it's almost like people are attracted to you and, and can feel that, that they can share that energy with you. Um, that's always been a big one for me. People will share their life stories with me really quickly and I, I don't mind. It's fine. Um, another one that I've experienced a lot is that I can't, I get, I get really involved in movies. So I haven't watched, I haven't watched scary movies since I was, I was seven years old watching Cujo and <laughs> there's a part in that movie where the dog is chewing off the mom's leg in the car and that was it, that was it for me. Um, and I just, I don't watch too suspenseful or scary movies because I get so engulfed in it and I feel like I almost can't um, can't watch those things because it's, it's almost like I can't separate reality and I just get I really feel the energy of it and it really gives me anxiety if it's too suspenseful so I just stay away from that and also uh, not anymore I don't watch TV but you know when I was younger and I watched TV commercials I'd watch commercials I, I cried all the time at commercials I just get it's so emotionally involved in commercials that I would cry at them and I just feel a lot of energy that wasn't mine. I was really being uh, connected. I was having all that empathy um, for a commercial. So it, it, it's, this, it's this overdrive of empathy that you have. Um, and also you have a knowing. For me it's a knowing uh, about people. It's like dogs and little kids can feel when someone is off, when somebody's a little shady. Um, I get that that feeling too. I, I can shake it. You know, you might even if people are saying the opposite or themselves or other people, and you just can't shake that feeling of something is off. And that's you know kind of like intuition too. Um, but you just get that feeling about someone, and then you know you later find out that that you were right. And so being unable to shake that and getting just that knowing of when someone is off and maybe not so trustworthy. Um, and that can be hard too when, you know, especially when you're little and, and people tell you you have to be nice to people and you you have to, you know, go give them a hug or, you know, whatever. And you just you just have this knowing inside of you and it it's a real struggle. Um, Something that can happen to you later in life or early in life, I started drinking early, um, is addiction. And not just substances, you can, you know, be addicted to shopping. Addic it, it's very easy to try to mask all that uh, energy that you take on with some sort of addiction, with something to cover that up, uh, to make you stop thinking about it. Um, and a lot of us are drawn to healing. Now, whether that's in the holistic or the medical field, I was in nursing school when my mom got sick, so I was actually headed down that road and I dropped out to take care of her. But uh, I ended up, you know, in the healing field. I went to massage school. I've done lots of uh, sound courses. I'm Reiki practitioner, things like that. I'm, I'm always drawn to the healing of others, helping of others, and just into that field. Um, so that's a common thing for empaths to be drawn to that. Um, and really, you can feel what other people are feeling. I think that's the main thing of um, 
being an empath and I have a couple of examples um, once I was at a restaurant that I like to go to and my favorite waiter uh, he looked like a really young tall Mike Tyson and he was always smiling and always wonderful and I saw him that day and boom it just hit me I could feel his energy was off even though he was still smiling at people and talking to them I could just feel this energy coming towards me something was really really wrong and really off and I don't know what it was to me it felt like it was some sort of family thing gone wrong and it just felt so heavy and uh, I mentioned it to my friend who who hadn't noticed until I mentioned it and then when he paid attention he's like oh he does seem a little off but I mean I felt it immediately and then that was the last time I ever saw him um, he stopped working there at, I don't know if it was that day but that was the last time I ever saw him so um, and another one I was at another restaurant once and uh, a girl working there was on the phone with someone and I just again boom I just felt this energy and it felt like she was going through a breakup that's just kind of the the feeling I got you know I get this this feeling sometimes this intuition and then I later heard in her conversation with another one of the employees that that's what was happening but I could just man I could feel it and it was like I took it on I just I just felt that energy and um, it's an interesting thing I didn't understand it growing up I would take on you know if my parents were fighting and other things was, were going on teachers I could feel their pain and it was just something you know when you grow up just the way you are is the way you think that everyone is but I didn't really understand it there was no name for it and uh, it wasn't until I was uh, way into adulthood that I heard the word I think I'd heard the word and thought it was just some woo-woo sci-fi thing which I know I seem woo-woo but I'm the most skeptical woo-woo person out there so um, I haven't always just been airy-fairy and into these things it really takes solid evidence for me to believe things so I think I had heard the word before but I never um, thought I was I think I thought it was more of a, a psychic kind of thing or who knows what I thought it was but I, I didn't think it was me um, and I think uh, I do have a love-hate relationship with the whole empath thing. I think that it's really nice to know that you're an empath because when I read into it and I realized, oh, that's what's going on. I have been feeling all this energy. I think it's really good to know. I think it's good to know because then you can find ways which I'll later explain some ways where you can kind of shut it off where you can stop taking on everyone's energy um, because you tend to take on others emotions and internalize their problems and you take it on as your own and you don't even realize it and I think it's really good to know that's what you're doing and that's what's going on so you're not feeling so overwhelmed so you're not dealing with all those emotions that aren't yours and you can get on track to enjoying your life a lot more because it's really hard when you take on um, other people's emotions uh, constantly and my biggest problem with uh, labeling yourself as an empath with with finding out that you're an empath is that you do label yourself and when you anyone labels themselves as something you kind of will take on uh, that persona you know it's really easy to read all about it and find out all the things that make an empath and then you know there's a thing called confirmation bias where you'll know these things and you'll you'll even possibly subconsciously seek out these actions to prove your point see I'm an empath see this has happened to me because I'm an empath and so um, I'll kind of talk about some reasons why I'm not a fan of labeling yourself as an empath taking that um, that label and running with it um, like I said it's really good to know that you're an empath but it's not good to marinate in it it's not good to roll around um, it tends to let you make excuses for your behavior oh I'm upset all the time because I'm an empath oh I can't go out in groups because I'm an empath oh I can't do this I can't do that and you never want to get that way because even if you are an empath it doesn't mean you can't 
carry on in life. You can't enjoy your life as any other person. It shouldn't stop you from doing anything. And it shouldn't be an excuse for anything for you to not enjoy your life or any sort of excuse. And I think it's easy to do, to do that uh, when you realize. Um, it also causes uh, a division. It causes a me versus you, us versus them mentality. It's kind of a duality thing. It, it kind of makes you special and different. And when we are on this path and really needing to understand that we are one, that we are all one, um, putting a division in between you and others is not a good idea. So you never want to get that us versus them mentality. And I think the biggest one that I hear is the empath versus narcissist. Everyone wants to because it's a you know it's a well-known thing, especially in the in the spiritual community, that empaths attract narcissists and or they attract to each other, or that's what people say or people think. Um, and it can be really, really easy if you are an empath to blame everyone, <laughs> blame other people, call them narcissists, and and blame things on them. Um, without realizing um, why you attracted this person into your life. You allowed this person into your life without doing your due diligence. Or, you know, and I know there are situations you get in and you don't know and the people, you know, but there's usually things that you could have done. You could have gotten out earlier. You could have seen the red flags, things like that. It's just never a good idea to blame, oh, I'm an empath and I attracted a narcissist and all my problems are because of them. So not a good idea. I had, I remember I had, uh, and I, I get this occasionally on my channel, um, there was a woman very specifically who wanted to get into kind of uh, uh, just a little spat, not a spat with me, but she, she wanted to complain about her narcissistic ex and she was an empath and he ruined her and just kind of wanted to blame her, her ex for all of her problems. Um, and because I wouldn't go there with her, um, for the next, I don't know how many months, every time I would, I, and I'm 99% positive it was her, every time I would put a video out, she would immediately dislike it. And she had, been, <laughs> she had been someone who enjoyed my videos before, but because I wouldn't go down that path with her. But it's so easy to do, it's so easy to, to claim that I am an empath and my ex so-and-so, everybody else is a narcissist and uh, they're ruining my life. And you can, it's a really, really bad road to go down uh, to blame someone else for your problems. I've done it myself. Um, usually most people who get a divorce do blame the other person um, instead of taking their responsibility. Um, it's a common thing to do, but I think with, with labeling yourself as an empath, that's going to make it worse. It's going to make it easier for you to do. So I don't think it's ever a good idea to uh, label yourself as anything. It's, it's never a good idea to take on any, oh, I'm this, I'm that, because like I said, it. it lets you um, make excuses for your behavior or for doing things or for not doing things. And, you know, back to the narcissist thing, uh, I remember hearing something, uh, watching someone, some professional, talk about how less than 1% of <laughs> people who people call a narcissist actually have the, the personality disorder. Um, but it's easy to think that people are because they don't care as much as you do and as and if you are an empath if you are a very empathic person um, you tend to care you tend to get care too much sometimes and get really involved too much and uh, when other people don't care the way you do it becomes a problem so um, now I want to talk about what you can do if you've never even heard of this and you're going oh wow I think I might be that kind of person or if you already know you're an empath um, just some things that you can do to ward that off so you're not stuck in this constant uh, sucking in of and everyone's energy. Um, the first one is focusing your high energetic powers on intuition or other things if you want to get into, you know, psychic type stuff or what, you know, for me it's intuition. It's listening to my intuition. Uh, realizing that you that everything's energy and that you're taking on this energy and that you have the ability to work with energy because you can feel the energy. I like to just push that toward um, 
focusing on my intuition energy, focusing on, oh, how does this feel? Does this feel like a, a good thing? Should I say yes to this? Does this not feel good? Should I say no? And then saying no uh, when it doesn't feel good. So focusing that energy use on intuition, really good, instead of uh, taking on the world's problems. Um, setting up boundaries is huge. Um, for a long time, I, I had no boundaries. I didn't know where to start with boundaries. I didn't know that it needed to be a thing. Um, but if you don't have boundaries, uh, you can't stop them from being crossed. So it's kind of learning about how much you're willing to put up with, you know, how much of your energy vampire friends you're willing to put up with, how much of hanging out in certain places that make you feel bad, uh, how much of that you're going to put up with, uh, how people treat you, all kinds of things. You know, that's going to be on a personal basis depending on what you're struggling with. But setting up boundaries is huge. Um, the next one, shifting conversations. It's really easy, especially you can have friends and sometimes just people you've just met who all they do is complain about their life, complain about their lover, their lack of a lover, their job, their family, their, whatever. And, and, and they can steer that conversation constantly toward that and that's all you do and it just drains you. And you can shift conversations. You can, you can consciously shift things away. Um, I do that all the time if things go toward gossip. As soon as someone heads toward gossip, I'm out. I shift that conversation real quick and people will pick up, pick up on it usually that you don't want to talk about it. So shifting conversations is really helpful to not take on all that energy. Um, acknowledging it's not your energy. I think that was one of the biggest things that I had to realize and practice was going, okay, this is not all me. I'm not depressed. I'm not scared. Um, you know, that's another thing too. If you watch the news and things like that, all that fear, you can take that on. And even though nothing scary is happening in your life and you really don't have anything to be scared about, you've, you've, you've taken that energy on and you've just sucked it in and you're holding on to it. And once that momentum goes, that's it. So acknowledging that's not your energy and moving on. Um, you know, I talked about my last video about cutting energy cords. Um, there's lots of ways you can clear your energy. You can search that. I, I've probably done videos. I, I don't know. Um, but you can clear your energy. You can look up how to do that. That's a good way to do it. If that would be helpful, if that's not something that you would be interested in. My favorite is sending love to that person person if you get that feeling like I had with the with the person at the restaurant and I just who and it just hits you and it kind of just takes over you and and for me it just takes over my body and I just feel heavy and sad and and I think the hardest part for me is I can't stop feeling sad for that person I can't move back into my energy that I was in and this is before I realized how to shift things but I would get so engulfed and then I couldn't enjoy my meal because I was wondering what was wrong why they weren't okay I was worried about them and so the best thing I've found to counteract that is to send that person love if you start f focusing on your heart if you start focusing on sending them love just just thinking about them in a loving way um, you can imagine yourself hugging them, whatever that means to you, sending someone love. That will shift your energy and it will shift their energy. You know, when you, when you think negative thoughts about people, it affects them, whether you realize it or not, and it affects you. Um, but so it, it does the same with love. So that's my favorite thing to do is send that person loving energy, healing energy, whatever you want it to be, and that will shift them and that will shift you so you don't get sucked into that whatever energy they're feeling that you're now feeling because you're an empath. Um, and just being aware of it at all times is huge. Once I realized, okay, I'm an empath, I, I was just more aware of it all the time. You know, when I go somewhere, I, I might consciously think, okay, I'm not going to take everyone's energy on. Everybody's here living their own life. I don't need to suck up everybody's problems. I am having a good time. I'm, you know, just being aware that it's something that could happen. And uh, that helps, just being aware, constantly. Um, real important not to put yourself last. I think that's easy to do. Um, if you have a significant other, if you have a family, if you have children, uh, 
it's easy if you have a job that you care about a lot, it's really easy to put everybody first, especially as an empath, because you do care. Uh, you tend to care more than others who are more self-serving. Um, but you can't always put yourself last, because if you don't have, you don't have self-care, you're not going to have anything to give, which is what you want. So really important to not put yourself last and be aware of that. Um, it doesn't mean you need to become the most self-serving person on the planet, but um, definitely not putting yourself last. Put your put big self priority and take care of yourself and treat yourself well, just as you would uh, anyone who you care about that you would want to treat to keep to treat well. Um, keeping your emotional state level, not allowing yourself to get into these emotional states, um, keeping a high vibration. Don't you know if someone's telling you their problems, just keep level because it's, it's an interesting thing. It, you can very easily, someone with a lower vibration with problems, they can very easily suck you in and you can get into that energy and you can focus on that with them and you can join them in that, but you don't have to. And it's such an interesting thing because if you are aware and you are conscious about it, you can bring them up <laughs> to your level. If you stay in a high vibration, if you stay even keeled, you can bring the other person up. And, and that's something I struggled with for a long time. I was just all over the place. I'd be up happy, then upset and mad, and, and I'd just be all over the place. And it was it's really uncomfortable when you can't get control of your emotions. And, and I, I mean, it can still happen today. It's a lot less and less, but um, really important if you consciously try to keep your, your emotional level up, your vibration high, and then you can bring those with you. Or, you know, if they absolutely aren't in a place where they want to join you, they will leave. <laughs> they won't want to be in that, in that high vibration if they're that, uh, that low and, and just don't want to be in it. Um, so real important to keep that even keel. Um, and it's important to take time alone um, you know, I have become more and more of an introvert. I think I used to be su such an extrovert. I used to just live and thrive off of other people. Um, and it is so, so very important to take a step back and sit in your own energy and get away from everyone else's problems, get, get away from everyone else's energy. Um, and if you can get out in nature and do that even better, you know, go lay down in the park for a while or something just to, just to recharge and get away from all that. Um, grounding and shielding, I won't get too much into that. You can look up, I think I've done some videos on that, but um, kind of some woo-woo stuff that helps a lot. Grounding, um, you know, maybe uh, feeling like you have uh, roots from your heart going all through your legs, down through the ground, into the core of the earth is helpful. Uh, lots of ways you can, you can ground in shielding, putting up shields or bubbles in between you and people. You can look that up. I'm not going to get into that. That's just something if that sounds interesting to you or maybe you know how to do that, that will help. Um, Epsom salt baths are great. That's going to help clear your energy and uh, almost physically remove that, that funk. It's, it's an interesting thing, but it really helps. So a warm Epsom salt bath. Um, petting animals is huge. If you have pets, if you don't have pets, sometimes I like to just go to a shelter or something and pet all the animals. Um, they are very pure and they don't hold grudges and they are very present and they don't, um, they just don't have the emotional baggage like we do because they are so present in the now. And so spending some time petting animals can really, really help if you tend to soak up everyone else's energy that'll help and most important I'm almost done and it's a long video most important is to not label yourself do not grab on to this empath thing and wear it on your forehead and mention it to everyone you know um, don't let it define you don't let it take over you don't sub subscribe to uh, empath YouTube channels don't read 20 books about being an empath don't take quizzes online about being an empath. Um, don't speak things into existence. That's huge. Um, you know, when we talk about saying, oh, empaths are, narcissists are attracted to, to empaths. Don't keep saying that. Don't keep saying, oh, I'm an empath and I'm attracted to narcissists because you will speak things into, into existence, as you know, 
Um, so be careful of how you're speaking of yourself. Um, or you might cause yourself weakness uh, by identifying and taking on that label because you might experience some of the things uh, that I've noted or that you might read about on empaths, um, but you might not experience all of them and you might pick up those attributes just by reading about them. The confirmation bias that I talked about. You might be, oh, oh, this is a thing that empaths do and then you'll start going, oh, well, that's what I do now. Um, so be careful with that. Uh, if you are an empath, um, it's okay. I think that it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not something that you want to hold on to and uh, see as some sort of disability or uh, some sort of hindrance to enjoying your life. Um, and anyway, I think that's it. It's getting dark. I think it's getting darker by the minute. It's hard to see me at this point. Uh, it's really good to be here and chatting with you guys. If you haven't checked out my workbooks or my books, they're down below, always down below. Really helpful. If you want to shift your energy and you're not sure how, the workbooks are fabulous. They take you through daily activities that you can do. All It's like a checklist. You just do them. You write what you need to do in the workbook. It's all super simple. They're down below. You can get them on Amazon, anywhere. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you soon.